November 7, 2017. I'm going to call it to order. Clerk Hefner, could you call the roll? Mayor Beckman? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Brinkman? Here. Councilmember Cernanek? Present. Councilmember Clark? Here. Councilmember Cole? Here. Councilmember Hopping? Here. Councilmember Valdez? Present. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, a God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have an agenda and it's been posted and presented to City Council, but we had one change that we'd like to make. Uh, if you go to general business items A and B, it would make some sense to flip them because uh, the companion discussion then would follow the other item that's related to it rather than having something in between and would allow, I think, a smoother transition and maybe move us faster through tonight. So unless there's any objections, um, are we okay with doing that? Good. Yeah, just reverse A to B and B to A. Just and for that's the record, on, I'll be voting yes on both. And that's just general business. Okay. Okay, thank you. With that, we come to agenda item four, public comment. Uh, there is one item that is here for a public hearing tonight. That's item 7A, and it's a budget issue. If you would like to comment on that, 7A, please don't use the public comment for that part of the time because we want to have your comments part of the record for that item on the agenda at that time. So... Public comment is an opportunity for anyone to express opinions or to ask questions that are not part of the public hearings. An immediate response should not be expected. We ask that anyone who would like to speak, please sign up, but also ask and make sure we don't find that somebody, after I just spoke to the issue, realizes that they'd rather speak at this time. We expect the comments to be civil. Disrespectful behavior will not be tolerated. There is a three-minute time limit. Our first speaker is... Paul Bingham. Paul Bingham, 236 West Delaware Circle, Littleton. Uh, good evening, Council. Um, the end of the election tonight brings us to the end of a council cycle, so to speak. End of a two-year, four-year, whatever. Um, I'd simply here to tell you thank you. I appreciate very much all of your work this last cycle. I know it's a lot of work, <clears throat> and I appreciate that. We don't always agree with each other, but uh, that's okay. doesn't mean I don't appreciate your work, which I do. Um, I'd like to especially mention Mayor Beckman. appreciate your being a fine mayor this last cycle. Mr. Mayor, and I'm really sorry to, that you're leaving the council. Good luck on your next enterprise, and thank you all. Thank you, Paul. The next speaker is Pam Chadburn. Uh, good evening, Council. My name is Pam Chadburn. I live in District 1, a block and a half from here. So um, I would like to echo Paul's comments I uh, don't always agree, but appreciate all the work that you do. Um, since I'm here a lot, I think I understand a bit of what it takes, and I really do appreciate your work. First off, I wanted to, again, thank everyone involved for the October 17th minutes. They were less than six full pages, but they had good high-level summaries of the topics of comments by both the public and the council members and staff. Please keep this level of reporting in the minutes. They are searchable and they are useful and they help people target in on the video if they need more information. If they don't, they don't have to. That's great. Thank you for that level of reporting in the minutes. Second of all, I wanted to talk about the Board of Adjustment Thursday, October 19th. This was a, oops, I should have, um, appeal of a staff decision to require um, screened fencing around a uh, proposed long-term parking area. <clears throat> and the staff found appropriately that was screening was required, which the chair recognized. However, the vote was four to one to reverse the staff's decision. 
You know, I'm not always uh, agreeing with what staff does, but in this case, they were right. And the Board of Adjustment did not receive, in my opinion, adequate information to make an informed decision. Um, <clears throat> this was not a public hearing to my shock and dismay. And my ask, let me jump to that, is that this should have been a public hearing. And I'm going to ask you, Council, please tell us and me why it wasn't a public hearing. And if it's not, I would like Council to take up why it was not, understand that, and fix it. Because an appeals hearing should be a public hearing for the board members to make the best decision. And in this case, this property is right across the street from the South Park Business District. And I heard from a member of the board that they would never have waived the requirement for uh, screening this lot. Yet we, their neighbors across the street, did. And they had no, no ability to speak to that to the Board of Adjustment, which is shocking to me. So that needs to be fixed. I want to know why it wasn't a public hearing, and I want to ask the council to fix this. Um, finally, the Bellevue Corridor public comment meeting on Thursday, October 26. I have huge concerns about our planning process, which isn't a design process, um, <clears throat> which requires Boards and commissions are policy makers. You don't do documents. Your job is to figure out what questions you need answered in order to set policy. We've never done that. So I have big concerns about that and no more time to talk about it. Again, let me repeat, thank you very much for all of your service. Um, and to the to, to departing members, Beckman and Hopping, thank you. Thank you, Pam. That completes the names that I had on the public comment sheet, is there anyone else here who would like to speak? I don't see anyone. So before we continue, it looks to me as though we have a contingent of um, folks in the audience who might be here to get credit for a merit badge. Is that, is that right? So do you think we might let them, as we have in the past, come and have their picture taken? or at least stand so they can get down and be on candid camera? Because we've done in, that in the past. Yeah, usually That's you make right. arrangements to show up, but we'd be happy to do that for you all. Let's, let's get that done if you'd like. If, if you have an aversion to being photographed, we'll consider that too. <laughs> it's, it's proof of where you've been and what you did. <laughs> Are any of you escapees, is that? Or in witness protection? Why don't you come on down? Anybody who'd like to get a picture for the record, though they can put it in their, uh, send it to their uh, counselor who's going to want to know whether you really did that merit badge, you'll have proof. Just stand up right here. Just come on right up here. In the front. And get Face that way you get on camera. See, there you go. All right, guys. Now, mm. the whole public can see who you are. Yeah. Now, who are you? You're <laughs> 263? Yeah, 263. 263, and what, what area are, where do you meet? Uh, St. Mary's. At St. Mary's? Mm -hmm. At St. Mary's of Littleton. Okay. And there's a camera right there that wants to take your picture. Actually, there's lots of them. There you go. There you go. Good job, guys. Okay, nice thanks. Thank you. thank you for being here. Hang in there. Keep doing it. Pat it, Keep guys. Doing it, guys. <laughs> Hopefully, we don't, we don't get phone calls. There's escapees in the crowd. And, uh, <laughs> Okay, that's all we had for public comment and public issues. That brings us to agenda item five, consent agenda items. Consent agenda items may be adopted by a single motion. All ordinances must be read by title prior to a vote on the motion. Any consent agenda item can be removed at the request of a council member. Agenda item 5A is ID 17-316. It's a motion to cancel the city council study session on November 14th, 2017. Agenda item B is ID 17-318. It's approval of the October 17th, 2017 regular meeting minutes. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of consent agenda items 5A and B. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any additional discussion? Ready to vote? The vote is seven in favor. The motion carries unanimously. Who seconded that? Thank you. OK, 
Okay, on the agenda, the next item is agenda item six, ordinances for first reading, and we don't have any of those this evening. Agenda item seven is ordinances for second reading and public hearing. This will be concerning ordinance 30-2017. It's an ordinance on second reading, amending the 2017 Littleton Stormwater and Flood Management Utility Budget. Uh, this is an item that uh, we've had discussed at study session, and in fact, part of the reason was that discussion that it's appearing tonight, and uh, it's also had a first reading. Uh, we have staff here to answer questions if council has additional questions. I don't see that council has additional questions. Mr. Reister, you're, you're okay. You don't have to show up then on this one. I don't think, uh, but we do have to have a public hearing, and there might be some other questions that arise. So I do see no one who has signed up to speak at this. I'll open the public hearing at 642. With nobody to speak, I'm prepared to close it unless there's someone in the room who missed the opportunity to sign. At 642, I'll also be closing the public hearing. With that, could I get a motion and a second? I move to approve on second reading an ordinance amending the 2017 Littleton Stormwater and Flood Management Utility Budget for Jackass Gulch Repairs. Second. We have a motion and a second. And this is just an adjustment to a plan that has been working for several years. There was a plan to do some of this work in some out years, and because of the amount of damage that's occurring and erosion that's occurring, we're moving it forward to keep any private property from being damaged. We have a motion and a second. Ready to vote? The vote is seven in favor. The motion carries unanimously. This brings us to general business. And as I asked when we adjusted the agenda, we moved what is shown as item A to become item B in order that we can continue this discussion if needed. The item B now, which we're going to discuss first, is resolution 49-2017. It's a resolution authorizing a second amendment to the intergovernmental agreement between the city and the urban drainage and flood control district for stream stabilization improvements on Jackass Gulch. And as I said, this is kind of the companion piece to the public hearing that we just had. We have a staff member who's prepared to make a presentation. It's, it's our utilities director. And I don't know that we have any additional questions, but he's available. Do we have any questions for Mr. Easter? Okay, this has been pretty well discussed at staff mm -hmm. at uh, some of our study sessions and an awareness the council has that this is something that just needs to get done in order to protect some private property. So with that, can I get a motion? I move to approve the resolution authorizing the second amendment to the intergovernmental agreement between the city and the urban drainage and flood control district for stream stabilization improvements on Jackass Gulch. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there additional discussion? I'm not seeing any. Are you ready to vote? The vote is seven in favor. The motion carries unanimously. So now this brings us back to the item that was originally shown as 8A. It's resolution 50-2017. It's a resolution to approve a final plat for lot one, block one of valley feed filing number one. And uh, this is a resolution, uh, does not require a public hearing, and we will, but it does require a vote. So it's listed in general business, and we have a staff member to make a presentation. Mayor, just at the outset, I want to note that this is an administrative function of the City Council uh, upon a determination that both the planning code has been met and the public works code, and I believe that has been the case here. The Council's action is solely administrative in this matter. Staff. Representing community development. The item before you this evening is a general business item for resolution 50-2017, which is a final plat for lot one, block one of valley feed filing number one. 
The applicant's representative, Josh Rowland with LAI Design Group, is here this evening and will also be making a presentation. The, the applicant is requesting approval of a minor subdivision, final plat, for the resubdivision of lots 27 through 25, a portion of lot 28, and a portion of lots 19 and 24 of the map of Littleton subdivision. The applicant's intent is to create a single 0.718 acre commercial lot to be known as lot one, valley feed filing number one. Uh, the process um, that we've gone through to get to this point tonight is we started with a plan development overlay and I'm gonna walk through each one of these because there's been a, a number of questions presented to staff throughout the day. Um, so we're gonna go through each one of the, uh, quickly, but highlight each one of the pieces of, of the steps. But this is an overview slide of all the pieces that we went through to get here tonight and the final plat is this evening shown in red here. The first one, um, the first step was the plan development overlay and they provided illustrative building elevations and the purpose of a PDO, plan development overlay, is to provide a procedure which permits more flexible site design and development than is possible under traditional zone districts while maintaining the provisions of the code. To take advantage of the flexibility of the PDO, this is a quote from the, from the code, to take, a, to take advantage of the flexibility of the PDO regulations, the proposed development must demonstrate special attention to creative high quality design and to producing a development that reinforces and complements citywide and neighborhood design goals and objectives. Plans that demonstrate such attention may qualify for certain variations, provided that such variation can be accomplished without impairing the intent of the land use code while providing substantial benefit to the city of Littleton. And that's a quote from 1095 of the city's regulations. The B2 zone district, um, the, the property was originally zoned B2, and the zoning criteria was modified through the PDO process. The PDO was approved on August 22nd of 2017. Um, highlights, um, I included a copy of the PDO up there for you guys to share. It was also in the um, staff communication. Um, the PDO set a minimum of 12% unobstructed open space and a minimum of 20% for the evenly distributed. This is different than the 50% that is typically done and the 20% um, the open space that's done with, with B2. Um, it also allowed for a 50% um, reduction in parking and reduced the parking stall for regular spaces from nine by 20 to nine by 18. And it set the building height at 61 feet. B2 does not have a maximum building height. Several um, illustrative building elevations were included in the approved PDO. And as I mentioned, a copy was included with the staff communication, and there's a copy up there for everyone to see and share. I have a couple more if you need them. I'm gonna run through some of the building elevations. Um, as a condition of approval for the PDO, the applicant was required to join the Main Street Historic District and receive a certificate of appropriateness <coughs> from the HPB, from the Historic Preservation Board. So here's some more elevations. And then we get to the, the Certificate of Historic Appropriateness. The HPV reviews all COAs, those are Certificate of Appropriateness, to ensure that the building and architecture is consistent with the historic district. In this case, the building was evaluated for consistency with the downtown Main Street District. Certificate of Appropriateness um, was continued from the December 19, 2016 hearing to January 18, 2017. It, at that point, it was denied by HPB on January 18th. Then it was approved with modifications to the building height at three, for a three-story building rather than a four-story building as demonstrated on the PDO. It was a four-story building with a six-foot height. The um, Certificate of Appropriateness dropped that height to 44 feet, four inches, and capped it at three stories. And that was approved on February 22nd of 2017. So these are some color uh, renderings from the, from the approved COA. Next came the preliminary plat. And the preliminary and final plat were processed together as part of the minor subdivision, but they're separate reviews. The preliminary plat, because this was a minor subdivision, was approved at an administrative level at the staff level. The um, preliminary plat was reviewed and approved by community development and public works, and it was approved on November 2nd. The open space and other zoning criteria were evaluated with the preliminary plat. And now here we are tonight at the final plat. 
So um, I'll go run through the specifics of the preliminary of the final plot. The purpose of a final plat is to establish lots, blocks, tracks, and easements. Technical issues such as drainage, grading, and utilities are also reviewed during both the preliminary and final plats. Final plat applications under city code are an administrative function of the city council upon a determination that all city standards are met. If the director of community development and the director of public works certify that the final plat is in compliance with the accepted engineering principles and the ordinances of the city, the plat is approved as to form by the city attorney. Said plat shall be submitted to the city council for final approval. The, uh, the Littleton City Planning Commission shall receive a report on all final plats approved by the city council. So we, uh, in evaluating the, the preliminary and final plats, the uh, applicable criteria are minor subdivision in 11.4, plat details in 11.5, um, also, the uh, performance standards set with the plan development overlay were reviewed, and we evaluated it against the comprehensive plan. The subject property is located on the north side of Main Street at 2679 West Main Street. It's the site of the former Valley Feed and Lawn Store. The property is within the downtown neighborhood plan and sub-area 5 of the downtown design standards and guidelines. The property is zoned B2 PDO with the plan development overlay approved um, the case with the case number of PDO 16-0002. This is um, a, a doctored up rendering of the final plat with the, the outline with the melting prop property uh, shown. Uh, the final plat is for a 0 0.718 uh, acre commercial lot, which is a resubdivision, as I mentioned, of lots 27 through 25, a portion of lot 28, and a portion of lots 19 and 24 of the map of Littleton. We have evaluated for compliance with 11.4 C1, specifically subdivision regulations, applicable engineering regulations, the comprehensive plan, existing and proposed development, and comments from affected agencies. Final site drainage was reviewed with the final plat and will be finalized with the site development plan. The applicant has requested a waiver from providing on-site detention since the existing site has a large amount of impervious area and the new development, will not be, will, new development will not be greater than the previous development. The project will provide on-site water quality through a water quality structure on the, in the parking lot to filter pollutants from site runoff prior to discharging to the storm sewer. Since there is not an existing storm sewer on the property, the applicant has obtained an easement agreement from the closest adjacent property owner to the west, which is the melting pot. And I've illustrated here because there were some questions as to the location of the melting pot property. There's another small property here, 2699 West Main Street, which is not the melting pot property. The melting pot property is um, delineated here by this blue line. Um, staff has proposed a condition of approval which requires that prior to recordation of the final plat, the necessary 20-foot off-site storm sewer easement shall be recorded and the reception number included on the final plat. And you can see um, here that there's a, a line waiting to be filled in for um, the reception number for that easement. Uh, uh, may I yes. ask a question here? Yes, sir. Go ahead. The property is the Melton Pot, is, but a piece of it is not. Is that what you said? This piece is not the melting pot property. This is the melting pot property. There's another little um, building right here. So if you look at this. Um, Top of the drawing is north. So if you yeah. look yeah, okay. here, yes. this is that other site. This is the melting pot. This is the valley feed site. This is another property that's not this. It's 2699 West Main Street. Where the antique store was? Yes. OK. Yeah, it's right. Grisham Studio. Great. Yeah, Old thank house. you. Yeah. We good? Do you want to move on? OK. The preliminary plat, as I mentioned, was approved on November 2nd. Um, the final plat was evaluated for compliance with 1141C. The proposed final plat meets all the provisions of the subdivision code. Final site drainage, as I mentioned, was reviewed with the final plat and will be finalized with the site development plan. A subdivision improvement agreement is not required for the project. A right-of-way permit will be required for any work within the public right-of-way. If the final plat is approved by City Council, all required signatures will be added to the final plat prior to recordation um, at the uh, Rapido County Clerk and Recorder's Office. Preliminary plats and final plats are reviewed for consistency um, with the comprehensive plan. Specifically, the proposed development creates more opportunities for residents to live, shop, and play where they work, 
and work, shop, and play where they live. It provides a mix of retail and office uses, which is consistent with land use 2B, with retail uses on the ground floor and offices above. The proposed final plat for one commercial lot is consistent with the overall intent of the little to mixed use plan development overlay and the, his, the certificate of historic appropriateness. Unobstructed open space has been demonstrated on the preliminary plat and will be further reviewed with the site development plan. I also handed out um, an, a table and there's extra copies up on the back table. Um, as I mentioned, the, the preliminary plat was evaluated and open space was looked at with that, and the table that was provided in your staff report showed the required and provided open space in incorrect <coughs> columns. The table presented on this slide and the table that was handed out to everyone and is also available on the back table shows those. It was these two numbers that were transposed. This one is actually the required, and this one was the provided, provided number. They were in the wrong column. Staff finds that the proposed final plat 17-001 um, complies with the pertinent goals and policies of the city's comprehensive plan, promotes the general welfare of the community, and staff recommends approval of resolution number 50-2017 for 2679 West Main Street, subject to one condition of approval regarding the 20-foot off-site storm sewer easement. And this is the condition of approval that the necessary 20 foot offsite easement shall be recorded prior to recordation of the final plat. Staff is here for any initial questions. As I mentioned, Josh Rowland with LAI is here this evening to make a presentation as well. well let's start with questions with staff. I, I, sure. Can we go back to the slide with the easement? Yes. I just want to, for, for me, clarity. So the easement is going through the antique property as well? No, so here's the, this is the, the lots that are being subject to the plat. This is the melting pot property. This is the easement. Okay, so it is all on the melting Pink pot property. Okay. It doesn't affect another property. It's only on the melting pot property. And they had no issue with that at melting pot? We have a signed agreement. It has not been recorded. They don't want it recorded unless the final plat has actually been approved by council. Cool. Thank you. That's it. Additional questions? I have, I have a couple of questions. Yes, sir. <clears throat> so when uh, we look at the, the PDO originally with the four stories. Yes, sir. And then we have the color renditions, which are really helpful, mm -hmm. showing the, th the three stories, uh, just as the uh, additional items. I just want to make sure that what we end up signing is the it would properly reflect three stories so the the purpose of the final plat is not any of the zoning criteria it's just a reassembling of the lots it's just for conveyance of ownership and the purpose of a final plat is to assemble property for sale create legal lots of rep record dedicate any necessary easements and right-of-way so we're not it, the PDO was approved the site development plan needs to be in consistent be consistent with the PDO and the site development plan is an administrative process. Um, it also needs to be the site development plan is evaluated against the, um, the certificate of historic appropriateness. And so this plat is just for the legal property boundaries. Okay, and the certificate of appropriateness um, is, and that was the, the issue with HPB, is the three stories. And so I just, I mean, I... I yes. I understand that's the direction we're all going in, but I want to make sure we, in fact, understand that. So the, the order was that the PDO was approved at 61 feet. Then um, the HPB first looked at it, consistent with the PDO, and said, no, we're going to deny this, and it was denied January 18th. The applicant came back, lowered the height, dropped it down for a maximum building height of 44 feet, 4 inches. That included the elevator overrun. Then um, the HPB tabled it and then, can, um, no, the HPB approved it, I'm sorry, on um, uh, February 22nd of this year. And then the applicant proceeded ahead to assemble the lots and create legal lots of record and then deal with the storm sewer stuff. And all of your engineering work is done with the preliminary and final plats and then finalized with the site development plan. But you have to have construction drawings, you have to have all of your pieces, your drainage studies, all those things well, are we'll done. Well, we'll never see that as a council again, so... Correct. Okay. And the other question I had, um, 
just process to go from nine by twenty to nine by eighteen uh, feet on this parking spaces. Are, are we establishing basically a new standard, a new criteria for, for downtown area and for future? Because we had some discussion at one time, mm -hmm. and I do not remember the circumstance, oh, I remember. that parking spaces need to be mm -hmm. right-sized for a current circumstance, but I don't want to right-size them to make something fit that wouldn't otherwise fit unless it makes sense, and we're going to do that as a standard for... Littleton uh, in the future. So with the PDO process, you're allowed to do this uh, this overlay, and you're allowed to deviate from certain criteria, and they're outlined in 10.9 of the city's code. And one of the criteria is the parking requirements, such as size of the parking stalls. And it's not setting a precedent. It's that each individual plan development overlay is looked at individually on a case-by-case -case basis with that give and take of higher level of design and evaluated against um, other criteria such as the design standards that are adopted by the city and then a planning commission can then therefore allow for deviations from certain criteria and that's what was approved okay. with the pdo additional questions so what were the higher level designs um, and creativity that justified the approval of the pdo i was not the planner on that one but i'm sure the applicant can give you a lot of um background on that, but it was um, architectural materials were looked at, windows, um, design, looking at it with, uh, in context with the downtown historic district. And so all of that was evaluated and it's in the planning commission minutes that are out available on, on our website, but um, the PDO was evaluated and approved. And then that was changed with the certificate of historical appropriateness. Yes, the height was reduced. Just the height? Yes. Nothing else? I did not review every single piece of that COA because we're talking about the plat. Bill? Yes. Um, in partial answer to Councilman Clark's question, the letter from the architect talks about some of the higher level design details. It's on page four out of that, that letter. Um, Help me with procedure, and this is bordering on administrative, so forgive me, but um, there have been instances long before any of the staff was here where HOAs were approved, but the building was not built as approved. How is the HOA nurtured through the process so that um, the building inspectors, who are really the last line of defense, are having are looking at a plan that reflects what was was approved does that go all the way with the building inspectors through the process so the next step uh, if we get the plat approved and the applicant would finalize their site development plan the site development plan was looked at for compliance with the pdo and the historic the coa so the coa is then um all of that's evaluated and then the site development plan is approved and recorded and then staff reviews the the approved um, site development plan and against the building permit that's submitted. So there's the checks and balances all along. It has to be compliance, compliant for a building permit to be issued. Okay. And then when, uh, when the building is built prior to the certificate of occupancy, staff goes out, reviews it. Planning staff also as part of that. Landscape is reviewed. Um, engineering goes out and looks at it. Everyone has to sign off on that uh, certificate of occupancy. Okay. And that's just an old hang up of mine. Um, the one other thing, and this we're just approving the plat, but um, looking at it today, we had the Excel is going to move some utilities around to do this, and it came to my attention. I actually talked to Mark about it, our city manager. They're removing some poles for this, and they're adding a, a pole. Uh, and you, Excel has the one percent fund that we were eventually planning to use to underground our utilities. And I wonder why we can't or can we work with Excel and try to lean on them some to get that portion of downtown's utilities undergrounded while they're already working with it. The staff has been working with um, Excel Energy and we hand out a pamphlet um, at every one of our pre-application meetings that talks about um, you know, the, 
the transformers, and we've also sat down and had an extensive discussion with Excel Energy. Some of the concerns Excel does have is on a piece by piece, piecemeal basis of undergrounding and doing it on an individual basis. They would prefer a one mile swath at a time. Well, then, can we use this as an opportunity to lean on them a little bit to get that one mile swath scheduled? <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, if I may. Please. Um, I have placed on the council tentative calendar, I think, a, I think early in the first part of next year, late January, maybe early February, for a council discussion about the policies on the use of the 1% fund. I do believe there are some strategies, and I've commented about this before to council, uh, of how the council may want to look at using that fund. We've got over $4 million sitting there. It's actually in Excel, Excel's accounts here. It's not ours, but... Uh, available to the city to use to convert. Uh, the downtown area is one that I would certainly suggest that we look at and how you might want to, as a council, approach that issue. Um, the timing of this particular project relative to that discussion, um, that's the piece I don't know, uh, but I have placed this on the agenda for council discussion. Okay, that'd be great. I just don't want to let that right. opportunity by. So thank you for your work and thank you for showing the, the three-floor plan. Additional questions of staff? Go ahead. Oh, on, on the height <clears throat> restriction. So how did they get down to, what, were they at four stories, or where were they before, and now they're down? They were at four stories at 61 feet on the PDO. The historic, um, the COA um, wanted it to be 44 feet, 4 inches, including the elevator overrun. So there was, um, it's actually 43, I'm going off of memory, but I think it was 43.6 for the height of the building, and then the elevator overrun was another um, 10 inches above. So that's at 44 feet? Four 44 inches. feet, 4 okay. inches, yes. And then, so is that third level is step back, it looks like, on the drawing? Yeah. Okay. So then, what did they remove to get down from 68 to? From 61 to a whole 61. floor. Was it planned with a flat roof or with uh, some sort of a pitch? Um, the PDO has illustrative drawings. We can go back to those. That was what was originally. Is it essentially the same as it is? Or yeah, it's just and got maybe shorter. Maybe it's a question for the just yeah. developer. But got shorter. My, I guess my question would be then, is it really the same design, just you took something out in the middle versus taking something off the top? I see he's shaking his head back there. Is it okay if the applicant addresses that with their presentation? Or do you want to answer? As soon as you're done, we'll have him come up. So what happens when the property is sold before the building's built? Another builder comes in or another owner comes in and wants to build something different. We have a PDO that's a 61 foot height. So that is a very good question. We have that's basically what happened with Littleton Crossing. So the our thought is that it would have to be since they set the height, but the condition of approval for the PDO to be approved was that it had to have a historic appropriateness, a COA approved. So they go hand in hand. So if you change one in a different design, you have to go back to the PDO. You have to go back to the PDO? And you'd have to go back and redo the PDO, take it forward to Planning Commission, have it reviewed if you made any modifications to anything because the COA is one of the conditions of approval. So you couldn't get an approval, a final approval of the PDO unless you had a, a certificate of appropriateness. But all that happens at all that happens at the administrative level. No, a PDO is a public hearing before planning commission, and a COA is an HPB public public hearing. I mean the interpretation of the certificate of appropriateness and whether it complies with it and all that stuff is all administrative through a site development plan. Yes. Yes, for the staff. Yes. Additional comments or questions, and then we'll have the developer come up. I'm not seeing any more. Could you uh, introduce our next speakers for us? Yes. Um, is it Josh Rowland? Josh, you're doing it. Josh Rowland with LAI Design is here. Good evening. Thank you for being Good here. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and uh, council members. Thank you for your time tonight. I'll try to keep this brief and also answer all of the questions that were brought up. Uh, my name is Josh Rowland with LAI Design Group. We're located at 88 Inverness Circle East in Inglewood, Colorado. Give me 30 seconds here to... I'm 
beliefs. Do we have a... Um, oh, never mind, I see what I need to do. I'm just opening a PDF, not a PowerPoint. There we go. Okay. There you go. Um, I have a very brief presentation when I had discussed with staff uh, earlier uh, this week or late last week they had said to keep it simple about uh, process and where we've been um, staff has done a great job explaining the more intricate details but I just wanted to first start out by saying that um, we're real happy to be here tonight it's been a, a long process it's been very involved um, we couldn't have done it without staff we've been before um, many of your uh, decision makers here at the city and so really what I just wanted to do was for your benefit having not you know been privy to all that we've been through in the process is, is kind of take you back through that we're at our two-year anniversary tonight um, in November of 2015 is when we had our first pre-app for this mixed-use concept um, and at that time we felt and staff felt that we could get through that process administratively through the SDP um, as we delved into it more and understood um, some of the complexities between the B2 zoning um, and the downtown design guidelines um, downtown design guidelines uh, we, we realized that there's just because the B2 zoning is older and not necessarily applicable for this district and the downtown design guidelines were done after that uh, there were some conflicts inherent conflicts between the two so it was determined you know about three or four months into that process that the only way to get a project that was in compliance and uh, in the within the intent of the downtown design guidelines was to do the PDO um, second part of that was um, that in order to join the historic preservation district and take advantages of some of those benefits that come with that we would have had to demolish all the buildings on site before we could even enter into the entitlement process so uh, at that time, we, we felt like the PDO was the best process. Uh, we proceeded and, and got approved, as staff had mentioned, on August 22nd of 2016 for that four-story building uh, that, that Carol had shown in her presentation. Um, if we had finished that approval with, um, without the condition that was placed at the 11th hour um, in that hearing, we could have proceeded and... and and completed our SDP with that four-story building but what happened at that time was one of the commissioners felt like okay if we're going to approve this we want to give the historic preservation board a bite at the apple as well um, and so the approval of that PDO is contingent upon joining the historic preservation district and getting a COA that certificate of appropriateness once we and this is a little contrary to what Carol had mentioned and if I am misspeaking please let me know but as we understand it now that we have joined the historic preservation district we cannot remove ourselves from that which means we will always have to have a certificate of appropriateness uh, in order to develop this project so to answer um, council member Clark's question um, if the owner were to sell this property to another developer he still has to go back before that historic preservation board for approval and they were the ones that required that we go from four stories down to three so even though we have a PDO that says you can do 61 feet and four stories um, our COA with the Historic Preservation Board requires the 46 and a half feet and, and three stories and they're passionate and adamant about that uh, as Carol had mentioned we did get denied the first time with the four-story building even after making some changes and trying to push those uh, third and fourth floors back um, they just weren't comfortable with it and so we those plans came back with a plan that's similar in a lot of ways but took off the residential component which was our fourth floor so now we're a retail and commercial development um, we believe it's a great fit for downtown it's bringing a lot of jobs as well as a lot of patrons to the downtown businesses during the work week during the uh, the work day for frequenting restaurants and other businesses in town so we think it's a great fit um, as Carol had mentioned we did get our preliminary plat approved very recently that has been in conjunction with what we've been doing since February which has been um, resubmitting our SDP resubmitting our civil construction documents and submitting our building permit uh, and we are 
this close to having those other items done. This is, as staff has alluded to, an administrative, more of a housekeeping issue. We have a, a lot that's been around for 100 years, and there's not any legal documentation uh, that needs to occur in order for the city to issue a building permit and for the city to issue an SDP. So this is, um, a, as we understand, an administrative um, action tonight. Uh, not an administrative action. It's a, it's a council action, but uh, an administrative function. So again, it's been a long road, a uh, lot of changes. We're still really excited about the project. Uh, to answer the questions about um, what makes this a high-quality project, um, the, the two owners of this, um, from the very beginning, were very passionate that this is a, a Class A-plus building. We have the highest of end finishes on the exterior. The interior will be treated as such. We're looking to attract Class A businesses in these office spaces and retailers in the ground floor. Um, we have beautiful brick detailing. We have high-grade windows and doors. We have nice precast caps. Um, it's just, it's a really attractive building all around, and I think it fits real well within the character of, of downtown. Um, the question about parking that came up, um, we did shorten the parking spaces a little bit, but we widened the parking aisles. And this is um, a function of really what is very commonplace in almost every other jurisdiction. 24-foot drive aisles, 18-foot deep drive uh, parking stalls, 9 feet wide. It fits within the the ADA criteria for uh, van and accessible parking spaces. So we weren't trying to squeeze, you know, uh, blood from a stone here. We were just trying to um, provide drive widths that were accommodating emergency and fire access and just provide a template that's very commonplace. Um, I think... Oh, it, lastly, how, does this, how is the COA administered through the building department? That's one of their check boxes. They're looking at our construction documents for the building permit, comparing it against the COA. We also have building elevations in the SDP that staff is comparing against the approved COA, so there's multiple checks uh, for that as well. Um, lastly, the underground utilities. We are, in fact, undergrounding all of our utilities. The, um, the supply, electrical supply, comes from the alley that's just to the east, east of Bradford Auto Body. Um, right now, our electrical lines come over the Bradford Auto Body site and to two different poles on our property. Um, they connect through our property to that small, uh, that small building that's also along Main Street and to some parking lot lights that the city owns on the back end of the parking lot of the melting pot. So the only reason we're adding a pole back in is so that once we go underground and to our site, it can come back out and still feed that existing property owner and still feed those existing lights on the city's property. Um, could the city choose to underground those utilities? Yes, but we are taking down uh, quite a few overhead utilities. We're cleaning up those old falling apart junky cobra heads. We have one of those cobra headlights on our property. Uh, currently, your Christmas lights are fed from a, a second line in between those poles. We're taking those down, taking down the cobra head, and we're going to feed those tree wells from our building. So this owner will be paying for Christmas lights on our section of the block as well. So I think I covered all the questions that came up. We're certainly here and available for questions. Again, I'd like to thank staff and thank your city for helping us get to this point. We're real excited to get started on this project. Thank you. Does uh, council have questions or comments? I think he answered my question. Was the floor that you removed then was the residential? Yes. We had half a dozen high-end apartment units on the fourth floor. And that's what you... So that's essentially what, the, the top of the building still looks the same as it would have. No, um, it's, it was four stories and now it's three. So before it was retail on the ground, two floors of office, and one floor of residential. We took the residential off and we still have two floors of office and one bottom floor of retail. Uh, it, well, I'm, I'm talking about changes as far as the roof goes then, as, as far as the way it looks from looking across... Uh, safe in the view house um, it's it's one floor lower it's still a flat roof um, and I think if I can open up staff's presentation actually I'll open up um, one of ours here <clears throat> I 
Not a big deal. I was just, sure. just curious. Well, there you, there you go. here you go. This was the four-story building, and you can see that we had retail on the ground floor. We had office on the second. The building then steps back drastically, about 20 feet for a large balcony, and we have office on the third floor. And then as the color changes up here, that light tan, that was the, it stepped back again, and that's where the, the residential was. Um, you can compare that with our COA, which has only the third floor of office and not that fourth floor above. Mm -hmm. So, but still have parapets <coughs> and all that good stuff on the. Sure. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you. At this point, uh, with council not having any additional comments or questions at this point, I'm looking for a motion in a second. I move to approve resolution 50-2017 concerning Valley Feed filing number one, lot one, subject to the following condition. Condition number one, the necessary 20-foot offsite easement shall be recorded prior to re recordation of the final plat. Second. Yep. That's a good one. A motion and a second. Is there, is there additional discussion? I just, I have one comment I just want to make. Uh, first of all, it's, it's really a shame that it takes two years. And, I, yeah. and we've got to figure that out. But I, now I want to say why I think it took two years. And it's, it's our problem with B2. It's our problem with B2 and a downtown development concept and a downtown plan. And then, and then using the PDO to fix it. And, and somehow we, we chose as a council to put a, a period of time to study B2s and perhaps make some changes, and then we never did. But I, I think the issue is still there and is reflected in something that takes two years. So we just got to figure out a way to make this. And I appreciate your positive comments for staff working through that, but we got a process problem here just, that just needs to be fixed. Any other discussion, or are we ready to vote? I'm going to say that I'm not sure that the process problem is entirely with the staff. I think that uh, part of it is related to what was initially submitted to the HPB and then what was subsequently submitted to the HPB. Um, so. you, you know, and, and, and just one more piece of that. I, I asked about... This is the only chance council has to look at this and the concern that we have over what may be administratively appropriate but changed after we had a chance to look at it. And it seems like the backstop is HPB. And, and you know, that may not be what council in the future really wants to have as their backstop. So, another thought. You know, all respect to HPB, but council needs to be at the decision point. Ready to vote? The vote is six in favor with Councilmember Clark voting no. The motion carries six to one. Good this luck, brings guys. A, good luck. <laughs> thank, thank you for uh, taking, taking the John. time to thank do you, something gentlemen. that's going to fit down there. That's, that really matters. Right. This brings us to agenda item nine, which are comments and reports. We're about ready to wrap it up. Uh, City Manager, what do you have? Mr. Mayor and Council, I just want to make you aware here late this afternoon, Douglas County contacted us. We do have a series of, what is it, 81 ballots or, uh, I guess, eligible voters in um, the Littleton Commons area that should have received a ballot for District 4, but they received a ballot for District uh, 3. And so our city clerk here is in the process of working with Douglas County here probably tomorrow to sort this out. But in essence, we'll have to remove whatever votes they had here for the District 3 candidates. The rest of the, the, their ballot would be obviously acceptable. So we do have a wrinkle in the process here, but just wanted to make council aware here this evening. Again, we don't have all the details, but we'll work through this here tomorrow. Our clerk will provide some more information to all of council here as soon as possible. That's, that's the apartments south of County Line? The apartments where I live, yeah. And there's how many ballots? 83? 
81. 81. Okay. 81 ballots. 30 have been turned back in. Let me get in front of a microphone. Hold on. We have a map we're handing out to you to kind of show you the location of Littleton Commons, just south of County Line Road there. 81 ballots were sent out um, with District 3 on them to vit District 4 voters. Only 30 have been returned. Those will be manually backed out tomorrow. I will be there to watch them back them out of the system. They will not change the votes. It will not change the outcome of the candidate three race because they're going to be backed out and they will not be reported tonight either for district three. Yeah, it would just affect the at large. Well, it wouldn't even affect that. They would, mm -hmm. yeah. district four would just have at large well, right. and the two questions. That's the ballot they should have received. So district three will be announced tomorrow. Yes. Yeah. All right, okay. Other than that, Mr. Mayor, that's my report for this evening. Okay. Let's go down now, Council Member Cole. Okay, on a happy note, we had a really good turnout for the leaf recycling on Sunday. And the um, next one and last one is this coming Sunday. So anybody has a whole bunch of leaves, I hope you will recycle them as part of this project. Um, it's 10 to 2 this Sunday. Um, then, on a very high note, um, just to summarize some nice things that have happening, in the last month or so, Littleton has been identified as the fifth hottest housing market, the eighth best place to retire, the ninth best city for families, and the tenth best small city in the U.S. So, we're, we're on a roll. I don't know if it's a rule, but we're, we're moving in a good direction and just nice to celebrate that. Council Member Clark. Nothing. Council Member Valdez. Nothing tonight. Thank you. Council Member Cernanek. Yes. Uh, just last Thursday uh, was the Strategic Action Planning Group on Aging Conversations on Aging. Uh, very quickly, um, what they did was divide the audience into an, a number of groups uh, to surface issues. Um, the priorities um, really don't change from some of the items that have been identified, but they include housing, mobility, nutrition, uh, crime, and along with crime, the awareness and education around crime. And um, their charge, of course, is to continue to work with the state administration as well as the legislature on any legislative items, although on that side, uh, those are probably um, not extensive, if any. Uh, what needs to happen and came from the group is more of an advocacy from the administration and the legislature in dealing with senior issues and providing resources to the counties um, to be able to address some of the things that they've been charged with, kind of the unfunded mandate side. Thank you. Council Member Hopping. Uh, just quickly, I'm announcing this now because I'm going off council, but December 16th is the Christmas bird count from the National Audubon Society. And my son, <laughs> Alec, and I are, are leading a quadrant that includes um, West Littleton and a little bit over in toward Marston Reservoir. If anybody would like to join, we'd, there's a lot of ground to cover. It's really fun. Um, uh, my son is a world-class birder, and I... <laughs> Uh, know what a bird is, and uh, <laughs> but uh, it's really a, an enjoyable thing. It's good for science, and uh, come on out, and we'll we'll help you learn the birds and have a good time. Yeah. And you, so, in you can just call me on my cell phone. My cell phone won't change from what's on the city website. It's three zero three eight zero nine three zero five three. If you have any complaints, I have Phil's cell phone number. <laughs> Chair Pro Tem Brinkman. Uh, no report. Bill, I don't want to sound out of place, but in farming country, that's called a quail hunt. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can count them, too. <laughs> okay, I, I don't have anything else. We are adjourned. Great.